2020 was a big year for South Korea's climate action as the country declared to go carbon neutral by year 2050. But how will Korea, one of the world's most fossil fuel reliant economies, make it a reality? Our Choi Jung-yoon takes us to Jeju, where that goal is already becoming a part of the daily life in part two of our three-part special series. Having spent his entire life on Jeju, Kim Soo-hwan doesn't search for a gas station, but looks for charging stations when his truck runs out of fuel. I didn't hesitate to buy an electric vehicle because in the longer term, I think the higher price pays off very well. And since there are many EV charging stations on Jeju, it's really not all that inconvenient. Plus, it helps the environment. But this very charging station is unlike any other on the island, in that it does not rely on fossil fuel for its electricity sources. This electric vehicle charging station here in the center of Jeju City is powered by solar panels, a perfect example of a virtuous circle of energy use. Renewable energy can be intermittent, so by using an energy storage system, we can secure enough power to fully charge 10 vehicles at the same time. We aim to install more of them in the coming years. South Korea's southernmost island aims to become carbon neutral by 2030. Already some 15 percent of the total energy used on the island comes from renewable sources. One solar and the other is wind power. With a wind speed of 3 to 25 meters per hour, these 23 wind turbines in Kasiri, Jeju-do generate some 120,000 megawatt hours of energy in a year. That's enough power for 30,000 households. These turbines use as little land as possible, allowing cows to wander and avoiding damage to the surrounding forest. Wind power has infinite potential because it can stretch out to the sea. And due to Jeju's geographic features and the impact of the climate, there's much more wind potential on the island than on the mainland. So how did Jeju become a frontier in green growth? Jeju has a smaller population than Seoul, for instance, making it a more ideal testbed than big cities. Jeju's aggressive policies for green transitions, along with the island's abundant natural resources, have helped us reach closer to our carbon-neutral goal. It's important for the country to keep a close eye on Jeju, he says, as the problems Jeju face today are what South Korea will face eventually. And how the island overcomes these challenges will help set the carbon-free stage for Korea and beyond. Choi Jung-yoon, Arirang News, Jeju.